your digital footprint. So before we start, um, I just want to let you guys know that in the chat box down below where you type your message, there is a gray drop down box where it says all panelists, make sure you change it to say all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your messages, okay? All right, good evening. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Noel Graham Mason. I'll be your, your host today. And today we're gonna to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. It's something that I think we all should know about and we all should learn about and take care of. And it's, it's our digital footprint. And so today's webinar is called Your Digital Footprint, Why It Matters and What You Can Do. So let's get started. So in your mind, as you understand it, what is our digital footprint or what is your digital footprint? And write your answers in the chat box. And let's see what, kind, what you guys have to say. What is your digital footprint? What do you think that means? Okay, Maria Teresa says maybe an impact. Mark says the traces you leave on the internet and social media. Okay. Okay, Nigella says the footprint that remains after using any digital tool. Okay, Julian, like a personal brand, something that characterizes you. Yes. Okay. Okay, the phone footprint, identification, the activities that we do, the pictures, is Paula. Okay, yeah, so generally these are all correct. Esteban says the image that everyone sees on the internet. Okay, Malaya says digital activities on the phone. Okay, so let's look. So your digital footprint is all the stuff that you leave behind as you use the internet. So every time we open our phone, every time we use an app, every time we send a message, every time we send an email, every time we open a web page or we buy something or we order food, it leaves a, a footprint, it leaves a track, a trace, and it leaves information about us, right? And so it can be your profiles and comments on social media, it can be the emails you send, where you shop, your Google search history. And even now that our phones have GPS trackers, uh, where we physically go and who we're with becomes also a part of our digital footprint. They can track the people that we're with on a day-to-day -day basis, where we go, where we shop, where we eat. And so everything we do online leaves a record. And so this is our digital footprint. And today we're gonna to talk about why that's important first, and then we're gonna talk about how we can start to take care of it, okay? So all of this information can possibly be seen. Sometimes it isn't, but a lot of it can be seen, and they used, it's used by third parties and databases, and it ends up painting a portrait and a perception of who you are. In the database, they can fill in information that's missing, and, and create you as a person digitally with all of your information, your age, where you live, what you like, where you study, who your friends are, what you buy. And all of this can be seen and tracked, right? And so it's something that in today's age is extremely important and delicate. And it can have far reaching and important consequences, right? So, and it's both positive and negative. Like there's ways that we can use it to our advantage, but there's also things that we need to protect and take care of because 
um, a lot of times there isn't content. Things can get taken out of context, right? And so it's very important that we pay attention to our digital footprint, right? So we can protect ourselves and on the other side, use it to our advantage. Okay, next slide. So which social media platforms do you use? Let's see your answers in the chat box. Here we have Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Instagram, okay. And are there any, any other ones that you use? Snap, okay. Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. TikTok, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that replaced Vine, right? TikTok, yeah. Ah, Flickr, okay. I hadn't thought of Flickr. There is a game. Oh, Reddit, yeah. Snapchat, okay. So obviously, you know, most of us use most of these platforms today, right? Waze, okay, Waze could be considered that, I suppose. LinkedIn, okay. Now, the next question for you is what activities do you use them for? For example, what do you use Instagram for? What do you use Facebook for? What do you use Twitter? Do you use it to get new news, to chat with your friends, stalking? <laughs> Do you use it to look for jobs? Do you lose, use it to look for music, movies, to stay informed? Says Julian. Express your opinions. Okay, Sophia. To meet new friends. David. Okay. Lauren says to talk with her friends. Opinion. Ah, looking for a relationship. Okay. For the news. To chat, to see travel photos, okay. To buy, yeah, to buy things, right? Ah, so Louisa creates new content, okay. All right, yeah. So imagine that every time we do something like this, we're leaving our footprint, right? And so we look at a certain newspaper or something, or we like a photo, like someone's post, or we make a comment or we connect with somebody new on Twitter or on LinkedIn or on Facebook, right? So this is all behind the scenes, leaving our digital footprint and leaving the tracks. All right. So a bit of a warning, right? So the reason I'm focusing today on social media platforms, because it's the, it's the, they're the ones that we use the most. We all use them every day. We all use them all day. Right, and and so and then the most important one, most important ones when it comes to see how we are perceived online. In other words, how do people see us when they when they open your Facebook account and they see your pictures and your comments? What do they see? What image are you creating of yourself? What is your personal brand that you're advertising to the world? Right? And so these platforms I want to focus on today because they're the ones that have the most impact on us directly, especially today. And I'm going to relate this to uh, today because the consequences of how well you take care of your digital footprint can have a tremendous impact on your career and on the success in life. Right? So the job that you get, the people that you date. Right? And so every time someone opens your profile, the image they see is a perception they're going to have on you. And so when they open your Facebook and your Twitter, that's what they're going to see. And this can have a tremendous impact on your career, especially now that all of you are studying, right? You're in university, you're studying to have wonderful, successful careers. Right? And so we have to take care of this because it could impact your future. So I'm going to link in the chat box and we're going to watch a short video
So we're going to watch, I just put a link in the chat box. We're going to watch a short video. It's two minutes, okay? And it's a, a funny video, and it's a real world, it's a, a real world example of what could happen to you if you don't take care of your digital footprint. All right, so um, open the link to the YouTube video, and we'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> Reality, that's right, Paula. <laughs> All right. So, so what happened to this to this guy? What happened in the video? Did he have a successful interview? <laughs> Not really, right? No, he didn't. <laughs> He's a liar. <laughs> so that is something that could happen to you. It really could, right? So. You're in an interview and you're, the person that's interviewing you says, oh, let me just see what's on their Facebook. Or let me see what's on their Twitter account. What do you think they would find? If they looked at your Facebook account today, what would they find? And it's very easy to do, right? Yeah, you should take care of your social image. All right, well, let's continue. Now, if that video didn't scare you, here's some statistics, right? Uh, from a survey they did from Career Builder. Um, and so these also highlight the reality of the situation. So, 70% of employers use the social media to look you up. So, when they get your resume, if they if you're if they're interested they're going to look you up on social media 70 percent 57 percent have looked up people's social media and said you know what i'm not going to hire this person absolutely not all right 43 percent use them to check on current employees so even when you're hired even when you have a job it's something that you still need to take care of there's almost half continue to look at your social media accounts 34% right, have, have 
reprimanded or fired somebody because of what's on the account. But also, it doesn't mean make everything private, right? So you, you still need to have some sort of public um, image, you know, public presence online because almost half, so they wouldn't call a person if they can't find you online, right? In today's day and age, if you can't find somebody online, they're pretty much a ghost, right? So why are they looking, right? What are they looking for, right? They wanna find certain information, right? It's the same thing that we do, right? Like for example, I don't know who's, who's used Tinder or obviously Facebook and Instagram, but we wanna find people that are like us or that we like, right? We want to see if somebody is compatible with us. And so the employers do the same thing, right? So 58% are looking for qualifications for the job, right? And so if they're looking at your social media to say, hey, does this person have what it takes? Do they have what I need? Do they know what they need to know, right? So almost 60% are looking for some sort of proof that you know what you're doing, right? And half of them are looking to see if you have an, a professional online persona right and so we'll go in, we'll talk about um twitter and linkedin and facebook later but they are looking to you for you to have a professional social media presence right so it means a, a good picture right a good summary that highlights your qualifications that highlights your skills and interests right? are you presentable are you mature right and then 34 percent say they even look to see what other people say about that person so for example, if you have a photo and the comments and the picture are talking not very good about you, well, then maybe that might not be so good. So maybe that may be a photo that you want to delete, right? So if there are people who are talking bad about you or who post comments on your accounts that don't paint you in a positive light, you may want to unfriend these people, right? And 20% say they're just simply looking for a reason not to hire you. Right? They're looking for any excuse whatsoever. So, and we're the same way, right? We see one picture of somebody and we make an immediate decision, right? They go, ah, oh, no, that person, no, no. Right? And so they do the same thing. So sometimes they just look just to look for an excuse and you don't want to give them an excuse, okay? The top three platforms that they check are Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay, which is pretty obvious for the most part, right? LinkedIn, if you don't know, it's um, a professional social media site. So it's almost like a Facebook for your career. So if you do, I'll talk more about it, but if you don't know about LinkedIn, I highly recommend that after this webinar today that you take a look at it because it has a lot of possibilities. All right, so Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And today I'm gonna focus on these three, uh, these three accounts as far as what we can do right and then how we can do it right in order to start building our personal brand online okay so being proactive can protect us and help us right and so the first thing is protection and then the next one is to help like how can we build our brand right and we we can use it to our advantage to stand out right so to stand out is to be highlighted right so like if there's a hundred people you find a way to be noticed, right? Like for like the person in right there says, hey, look at me, right? And so today we're gonna to talk about how to use it also so you can stand out. And let's look at some information to help you understand why it's important, okay? Consider the following. The external university has around 12,500 12, students, right? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And you're all going to have the extra now degree. Right? So that is not that's not different. That's not different. You can't differentiate differentiate yourself from that, right? So 13,000 people have an extra now degree. Right? And you have to find a way to say, "Hey, wait, I'm over here. Look at me." And the way to do that is is with, is with your personal brand on social media. Here's some other statistics that I found from the Ministerio de Educación, right? So this is from 2018. These are the graduation rates. So each year, this is how many people graduate, more or less, right? So the year you graduate, these are how many people you're going to be competing with 
in Colombia alone. Now, if you're looking for a job overseas, which many of you are, or if you're looking to study overseas, which many of you are in the United States, in Europe, right, Germany, France, there's going to be, a, that's even more people that you're competing with. But let's just talk about Colombia today, right? So in 2018, what's the total there? So the total, oh, the total's on the next one. Let me show you the totals first, and I'll go back, all right? So here on this slide, right, 225,000 people graduated university in 2018. 225,000 people in Colombia. And we all know that the majority of them are here in Bogota, right? And so let's estimate, let's say that 100,000 are here in Bogota. Every year they graduate and they need a job. Now, yeah, 226,000. Now let's look at by career, right, by field, right? So if you look at economia, what is it, economy, administración y contaduría, and things like that, right? So many of you are from this field of study. And how many is that? 185,000 people. So the day you graduate from the external, hoping, praying, waiting for finally to get a job, make some money, there's 185,000 other graduates graduating the same day as you, looking for the same jobs as you are, right? And so in today's day and age, like, there has to, there, we have to find ways to stand out, like to make, to differentiate ourselves, to make sure that people notice us, they pay attention to us, right? So let's continue to see what we need to do to do that. Here we go. I put a wrestler, right? A Mexican wrestler. That's a lot of competition, right? It's a lot of competition. So let, let, let's uh, recap a little bit. So we need to protect our social brand, right? We need to be take preventative measures to avoid losing a job, right? Because a bad photo or a bad comment or something could make an employer not hire you. Right? And then we also need to find ways to use it to our advantage because it helps us stand out and help us get the job that we want, right? So let's look at how we can do this first. All right, so let's hear some answers actually. So in the chat box, how do you, what can we do to stand out? What can we do to stand out using social media? What do you guys think? Let's put your answers in the chat box. Okay, Paulus is showing your talents. All right, absolutely. Good hobby. Yeah, so on the slide, the question is, so what can we do to stand out? Uh, up, to, up until this point that we've talked, like, how do you think that we can stand out for the time when we graduate, we can get the job that we really want? So if someone says create content, that's absolutely correct creating content. So for example, if uh, you can have a blog, right? So a blog is a very good way to show your talent. You can make videos. There are a lot of uh, social communication students who can do videos, interviews, you can design websites. Okay, following people that have similar interests, leading opinion. Okay, good personal publications, exactly. LinkedIn has uh, uh, a place where you can actually write articles on LinkedIn. You publish them on LinkedIn and when people in your industry can follow them. So that's a great way to do it as well. Being beautiful, says Juan Charlie, of course, that, that never hurts. Right? Innovative, videos and good photos. Yeah, creating a good project. Yeah. You guys already have a lot of content, actually. Right? With all of the projects that you do at the external in your classes, there's a lot of intelligence there, right? There's a lot of development and you put a lot of time and energy into these like financial analysis or uh, publicity projects, right? And so you guys already have a lot of content that you could take advantage of. And so for example, if there's a project that you did in your financial accounting class, you could write an article 
on that project and talk about the way you thought of the analysis and what your results were. So you guys, there's a lot that you guys can already take advantage of, right? All right, cool. Let's continue. So a smart and targeted social media strategy can be our ticket to success, okay? And, and we're going to talk about it, right? So the more you pay attention to it, the more you dedicate to it, the more valuable it can become. And you start to build your network, right? It's your network, right? Your network can be the people that you know directly, but also the people that you know indirectly. And then even a third level out, somebody that knows who you know, right? And so using social media, we build this network and it becomes more valuable. And it can be any of these, really. It can be any of these. It can be Instagram, it can be YouTube, all right? Facebook, Twitter. So here's an example of what this looks like in the real life, all right? So I Googled my name, Noel Grand Mason. What do you see when I Google my name? What are the first three things that you see? Write your answer in the chat box. What, what websites do you see? Yeah, right. So the first one that comes up is external, right? Because Phil has done a wonderful job of making the English link page. And again, it comes up. <laughs> That's the first hit. All right. The next one is my LinkedIn profile, right? Which is my professional presence online, right? And then my Twitter account. And then, of course, there are some photos as well. Right, some pictures of me, some travels that I've taken. Right, so this is what happens when I Google my name. Right, now let's play a game. We're gonna play a game, okay? Let's play a game. I want you to Google your name. All right, so open another web page and go into Google and type your name. And I want you to tell me what you find. I want me to tell you. I want you to tell me what you find, okay? So I'll wait, and then when you when you come back after you Google your name, take a look, and come back and write in the chat box of what you find when you Google your name. Okay, so all the Pinterest, okay. I hadn't mentioned Pinterest, okay. Facebook, external her thesis. Cynthia has her thesis. Well, it must have been a good thesis. <laughs> okay, Louisa has the video she's created. Perfect, perfect. Okay, photos, photos of a clothes brand. What else? Somebody else, right? Who, who didn't come up in the search? When you put your name in, did you appear or was, or was it other people? Or was it a mixture? Maybe one of you and one of somebody else? Okay, so Juan, Juan mentioned something important. So Google your nicknames too. Google your nicknames also because that can be connected. All right, so if you, if you use an alias, right, or if you have other aliases from other, you should Google those as well, all right? So Julian Andre, Juan Andres says he appears then some coincidences, all right, with other people. Prezi. Okay. So here's something I want you to think about, all right? So what you just did, right? What you saw is what I would see. It's what your boss would see, right? It's what that girl you're interested in would see. She's like, oh, 
Let's see here. Juan Andres wrote me a message. Let me see who Juan Andres is, right? Veronica says she doesn't appear. All right. Oh, and then Fausto says he appears with his nickname, right? Okay. Yeah, so, we, so you have to be careful because your nicknames are also your name, right? And, and they can be traced back to you. Laura Puentes says a professional tennis player, right? All right. All right, so this is what the world will see, right? Anonymous, hom anonymous, anonymous, homonyms. Oh, okay, homonyms, yeah, right? Homonyms, other people with your name. Karen says nothing. She doesn't appear. She's invisible. All right. So that's what the world would see. So if you're applying for that job or the internship, which many of you are looking for internships, if you're applying for that internship, that's what the person would see when they Google your name. Now there's something else to think about, right? Because something particular to Latin America is that many people have your name. How many Juan Andreses are there? How many Laura Puentes are there? How many Karen Buitragos are there? All right? So in Latin America, there's a lot of people with your name. Right? Because all, the names are used a lot, right? Maleha says there's so many people with her name. And it's true. It's true. I find that in the external. I think there's like 20 names in the external. Right? And so this it's another, it's a, um, to have to combat right and it's going to make it harder for you to stand out because a lot of people if i google your name i'm not going to find you right and so it's another reason why paying attention to your digital footprint is so very important especially now right because so we're dealing with about 250,000 college graduates every semester right? every year that you graduate there's 250,000 people graduating with you, 100 and, what was it, 125 of them, 125,000 in your career. Plus, on top of that, a lot of people have your name, right? So I'm just, I'm doing this to highlight why this is important, right? So let's continue. And just, I'm repeating myself a little bit, but just, again, it could make the difference, right? This could make all the difference between the job that you really, really, really want and that you've worked your whole life to get. You know, all those years in school, five years in the external, and you're trying to get this job that you really want, that you love, right? Or the job that you get, right? The settling, like, ah, oh, okay, I guess I'll do this job. All right, so Felipe, I'm glad you asked that question. Let's continue. Let's get some recommendations about what we can do, okay? The next slide. So now we know the why, right? Let's look at the how. All right. First, yeah. Let's clean it up. Okay. So let's clean it up. That's the first step. Is to we have been on social media for a long time. I myself have been in Facebook since like 2000. My university was one of the first universities to get Facebook so, um, after Harvard because I created it in Harvard and I was studying in Boston at the time. So I've had Facebook for a long time. So I have a lot of information and you guys have had these social media for a long time. You have a lot of information now, right? So. The first thing to do, to do, again, you did it now, but to do it again is Google yourself and find out what's there, right? And that means all of your names. Like one Charlie said he has aliases, nicknames. That means Googling your nicknames as well. Think of all the names that you've used online before. Old email accounts, old social media accounts that you don't use anymore, right? And so you wanna Google them and then find out what's there so you know how to attack it, right? You know what to clean up. So the first thing, look for what you need to clean up. What's he selling? <laughs> Somebody, somebody's selling something outside my house. Uh, so number two, 
consider making your accounts private until they're clean, okay? And so if you have an account that's public right now, you may want to consider making it private for the meantime until you get it clean. Another option is if you still want to have like fun online with these accounts, is you could create two accounts, right? For example, my Facebook account doesn't have my real name, which I, I changed it years and years ago, right? It's not my real name because it's something that I didn't want to be used against me because like I said, I've had it forever, right? And, and there's, there's pictures from my sophomore year in university all the way until now. And there's stuff that people have posted about me. So my Facebook account at the moment is private, right? So consider making two accounts if you still My says, I think that is a professional account, it would have private. Okay. All right. So if you have two accounts, your personal one would be your private account, and your professional one would be your public account, the one that's open, the one that can be Googled, right? The one that would show up when I put your name in the Google. All right. Step three, delete, delete, delete. All right. Now it's time to clean. All right. Now it's time to clean. So Look for provocative or, in it or inappropriate photographs, videos, inappropriate posts, photos that include you drinking alcohol or doing drugs, photos that have you with very few clothes on, perhaps, or looking overly sexual. Um, discriminatory comments, right? So people look for things like that. If you're being racist, if you're being rude, if you're being ignorant, if you're talking against someone's religion or against someone's politics or against a certain race of people, find those comments and get rid of them. Erase them forever, right? Anti-gender comments. Uh, also negative content, complaints about, for example, your teacher, complaints about your old boss, complaints about your old coworkers, right? Or grumpy and mean posts, things that are just negative in general. People don't wanna work with people, they don't want to be friends with negative people, right? And but you don't have to get rid of everything, right? You, uh, the good things you can keep. If you see a beautiful picture of you, yes, keep that. If there are likes that you have that reflect your current likes and your current career and your ambitions and aspirations, those are fine as well. Content that makes you seem friendly content that makes you seem positive, right? Or shows you'd be well-rounded, right? So those things you can keep. It's all the negative stuff that we wanna get rid of. Number four, not all selfies are beautiful. There, there we have, there is um, a perception in today's age that too many selfies makes you seem immature and narcissistic, right? So if you have a million photos of you doing this, it's not gonna be a good look for you online, right? So too many selfies makes you seem immature and narcissistic. So when you're looking at your photos, you can curate them, right? Make a, make a positive collection. And if you see that there's 1,000 photos of you, you may wanna get rid of some of them and tone it down a little bit and add some of you with your friends, with your family, okay? And the last one is update your likes, friends, follows, and connections, okay? So for example, the, the friends that I had in university aren't the same friends that I have now. The movies that I watched, the books that I read, the TV shows that I watched, the bands that I listened to, right? So it's also a time to do that, to update your likes, your connections. You can unfollow people, right? You can unfollow people. Um, you can make new connections. So. In this section, we're cleaning it up first, right? So then when you do. Let's see what time it is. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the next one. Any questions so far? You guys have any questions? Okay. All right, cool. All right. If you have a question, feel free to write it in the chat, okay? Let's continue. Yeah. 
Someone asked earlier, what can we do? All right, so here we're going to talk about the three platforms that I think are the most valuable, right? Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all right? And so as you can read here, so for all of them, right, you have to up, you should update your profile picture and your cover photo, all right? So the, the picture should be recent. It should be professional for the most part, all right? You should be well-dressed, all right? And so the first thing you want to do is update your profile picture and your cover photo. And it should be presentable. It should be, when someone looks at your account, it should be a good representation of who you are physically, right? And then you want to update your about section, yes? And so you can change it, right? So you want, and you want to make it about you professionally, right? So you're studying at the extra now. What, what faculty are you in or what career are you studying? Right? Uh, do you have any new contact information? Can you put your LinkedIn profile URL? Can you put your Twitter URL, your email address? Right? And so you do. You want to update your about section and your URLs. Another thing that is very valuable and makes you look very smart is securing your personal URL. Now this is um, true for all three of these, right? And so what is that? So if you look at the LinkedIn uh, section, right? You'll see that my LinkedIn.com URL is LinkedIn.com slash Noel Graham Mason, right? Because when these platforms choose our URL for us, it would say Noel.GrandMason 48698KZQRPTS, right? Just nonsense. And so by, by making your own URL, you become much more um, easy to find. Right? And the very it's so like, hey, they put your name into Facebook, they put your name into LinkedIn, you pop up right away. Okay, so that's something you want to do. And then add your new likes and interests, right? They reflect who you are. So what what wonderful books have you read lately? Well, what, what movies have you seen that are no longer South Park, you know, but but rather something by I don't know, David Lynch or something like that, right? What music are you listening to now? Are you still into your hardcore rock stage? Or have you moved down to something a little more adult. I don't know, right? And with all of these, it's keep active and current, right? So people would like to see activity. They like to see that you've been using this platform, all right? Twitter is very much the same, okay? You update your profile picture, and, and Twitter is called your bio, right? Your biography. So you want to up, complete it and update it. And oftentimes we, we open an account. And we just put the basics, but we should take advantage of each section. And so when we open these pages to look at, we should look at each section carefully, right? And fill them in. With Twitter, the same thing, secure your personal URL, all right? So say Twitter, hashtag, Noel Graham Mason, all right? So Maleha doesn't have LinkedIn. All right, so I'll, I'll get to that in a second, Maleha. Okay. And number four with Twitter is very important is to make connections, right? You wanna start following people that are in your industry, thought leaders, professionals, executives, people who are change makers, right? And they're leading the way in your industry. So you wanna start following these people on Twitter and connecting with them on Twitter, commenting on their posts. And in, in this way, you're starting to create your the digital footprint that you want to create. It's more active, right? You have a hand in it. And so on Twitter, it's very important to make connections to people in your industry with your classmates also, right? Because you're all going to be working in the same industry. And so you want to connect with your classmates, with your teachers could be as well. There's a lot of extra now alumni that you can connect with who are very successful and you connect with them. And the very important thing about Twitter now too is memes are okay, right? You can do memes, but not all the time, right? Memes are funny. We all love memes. But you do want to start to post content that is relevant, interesting, and professional. All right? So if you want to be a journalist, you, you, you want to start to post content that's related to your field. And so it can be an opinion on what's happening in the news today. It can be, um, you can share a blog that you've been enjoying. You can retweet posts from industry leaders, right, with your opinion. So you want to start to post content that is related to what you want to do. So if I'm your employer, I look you up on Twitter and I go, wow, this person is plugged in. This person knows what's going on, right? And it's also a way to show our intelligence, our qualifications, our skills, our interests, right? It's a way to prove to these employers before they meet us that we have what it takes, 
right? And you all are very, very smart people, right? And you're creative and you're intelligent and you have opinions. And so Twitter is a wonderful place to do that, but responsibly, okay? Now, LinkedIn, I, I imagine a lot of you don't use LinkedIn yet. Now, it's something that I highly, highly recommend that you look at and you start to use, okay? And so that's why I put number one, open an account. Okay, open an account. LinkedIn is Facebook for employers and for your career, right? People use it the same exact way, right? And so if you apply for an internship or a job, like or type your name in LinkedIn, if you don't appear, it's gonna be strange, right? It's gonna be strange. Or if you do appear, it's gonna set you out, right? You're gonna stand out from the crowd because right now, I don't know how many people have LinkedIn. So imagine there's, um, what was it? Uh, 2,500 people graduating tomorrow, right? From the ex from uh, in Bogota. How many of them have a LinkedIn account? Right? I don't know. I don't know. But let's say it's like a high estimate, maybe 30%. So just by having a LinkedIn account, you've already taken one step to standing out, right? So I highly recommend you look at LinkedIn, all right? So when you do open the account, you make it complete. You polish and professional, but same thing, you need to do every section. The headline, right? The headline is the first thing they see. They see your picture, professional picture, and a headline. Like, who are you, right? And so if you ask, how do you secure a personal URL, right? And so in, in all of them, you have to look at the settings, right? Um, this is something I can't really explain today, but on Google, right, or even in LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, you can find out how. So just a simple Google search, I'll tell you, in LinkedIn, if you go to the right, up top, when you open your profile, you go to the right, there's a section that says edit URL. And there you can type it and you can make it whatever you want, okay? But for all three, it's similar. So, all right, so again, secure your personal URL. Another very good tip is to have profiles in English and Spanish, right? And so if you're gonna be looking for a job in Colombia, your principal profile should be in Spanish, right? And then you should have one in English because you want to highlight that you speak English, that you know English. You've been a long time learning English and you deserve to be recognized for it. And we know that nowadays it's a requirement in, in the field. To get a job, a good job, you need to know English. And so it's good to have profiles in both Spanish and English. If you're looking for a job in Europe or the United States, for example, you can make English your primary language and have another account in Spanish, okay? And then LinkedIn is very much like Facebook and Twitter, right? You find connections. And so you connect with people in your industry. And in this case, you become friends, right? So you connect with them, become friends, and now people, they show up on your posts and you show up in their posts. And there are groups that you can join for your industry, um, okay? And so, and again, with LinkedIn, it's keep active and current. With all of these, you want to keep them updated with your personal information, right? So if you graduate, you got to change those profiles to say you graduated, right? If you change cities, you change that, right? And so all of these, um, so here's some tips. I'll explain in a second the rest. Are there any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions? All right, let's continue. So we're getting to the end now, okay? And so I wanna highlight, this, this has been, oh, it's, oh, okay, so Instagram, all right. So Instagram, honestly, Paola, I don't know enough um, about Instagram. I haven't played, done a lot with it to tell you certain tips. But the tips that I've given you here, for example, are pretty universal as far as you know, what you need to do, right? So I'm sure on Instagram, you can get your own handle, right? Like Twitter, so you get, so maybe you wanna change it to your name or something with your name in it, okay? And, and then you, you do wanna, now with Instagram, you wanna be careful of like what you like and who you're connected to. But, um, so I don't know enough, Paola, but these tips can certainly, I'm sure, be applied similarly, okay? All right. So this is just the beginning. We're, you know, we're, 
it, it's only an hour that we've been together today and I've given you a lot of information and there's a lot more that you can know and learn to be able to do this well, right? Having social media profiles that work for you and help you stand out, they take time and dedication. It's, it's not something that you can do overnight. You know, it, it's a constant interaction, right? And you also don't need all three, right? If you want to dedicate yourself to one or two and do them really well, that, that's okay. Uh, Fausto says LinkedIn and both. No, perfect. Link, LinkedIn and both in two languages is good. That's what I was saying, Fausto. The thing is with LinkedIn languages, you have one as your principal and one as your secondary. So you can switch them depending. But no, absolutely have LinkedIn in two languages. Absolutely. All right. So this takes a lot of time and dedication, right? And there are many resources online that can guide you in the right direction. And sim a simple Google search will give you a lot of information. You, there's a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, for our social, social communication students, I'm sure they can understand um, how complex it really is, right? But trust me, it's worth it. Right? Your future could depend on it. And when I'm talking about your future, I'm talking about money, really. I'm talking about money, you know, and so, so it's something that takes time and dedication, but it's absolutely, absolutely worth it. It's worth your time. And so I highly recommend that you take these tips into account. All right, now a couple minutes left. Are there any questions or comments with this presentation, with the information I have given you? Feel free to ask, you know, put them in the chat box. You can ask me questions or comments. And I'm happy to answer in a couple more minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sophia. All right. Well, thank you very much for attending the webinar about our digital footprint. I sincerely hope it was useful. I hope something and, and I hope that you have some ideas going forward. Right? So remember, the first thing is to clean it up and then you start to rebuild it with information and photos and videos that help you. And by doing that, you'll have a much better chance of getting the job you want and finding the success in life that you want. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn and on Twitter and feel free to send me an email at my university account. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Could TikTok help you stand out? Okay, who's uh, Sophia? Yes, I, I think so. Um, I, again, I don't know a lot about TikTok, Sophia, but um, I, I guess because they're short videos, right? They're like what Vine used to be, right? So I think if you do, if you make yes, I've seen people on Reddit, for example, making really well-made, short, informative TikTok videos. For example, like a how-to video or a tips video, like a five tips to do this video, I think that could definitely help you. Um, as anything, it's all about how you use it and how well you present yourself and the quality of it. So yes, TikTok could absolutely help you, especially because it's a very viral social media platform and it, it can get shared really, really quickly. So yeah, Sophia. Okay, Najella, so how, how to secure a URL? Okay, so um, in each platform, there's a different way to do it, right? And so generally what you wanna do is when you open your profile, right? So for example, on Facebook, when you open your profile, there are certain settings, right? And so language, da, da, da. You should find a setting that says edit personal URL, something along those lines, right? And Twitter the same way. Twitter is like your handle, right? And so when you open your, your settings in your profile, you start making your biography, there should be a setting that says edit personal URL or edit URL, something along those lines. And LinkedIn, the same thing. You'll have to click around and look, okay? But it's pretty easy to find. And if not, just use Google. You can get the information there. You're welcome.